This time on Pedal Box, we're dealing with the steering column, trying to seal that up to the pedal box, and trying to sort a few wiring problems we probably should have dealt with quite a while ago. So we are back once again underneath the bonnet, trying to sort a problem that we should have sorted probably a couple of years ago when we had much, much less stuff in the way, both under the dashboard and in the front of the car, to try and sort out the steering column. Because, well, that's a lot more convenient. Um, the UJ needs to go through the firewall, so that drops down through, goes onto the top of the steering rack quite nicely. Unfortunately, that has left quite a sizeable hole that we now need to block up to stop air and water and anything else going through and making my feet cold or anybody else who's driving this feet cold when they're driving it, because that is miserable. The Golf does that, it has a couple of holes in the firewall, and at some point, probably when I do the engine and put that back in, I will seal those holes up because I hate it. So we bought the steering column firewall boot from an Audi A6, the same one that we took all of the intercoolers off. And I'm hopeful that with this cut down, we'll be able to squash this so it gives us enough clearance vertically that the uh, column will be able to move up and down when we adjust it. And I've also got a generic um, steering, steering rack boot. So this would normally go over the tie rods, tie rod end would go on over here. This end goes on the rack and this just keeps all of the detritus from getting inside. So. Between those two pieces, I'm hopeful we'll be able to make something work. So we've enlarged that opening for the column to go through so that this boot will eventually fit. And we've obviously trimmed off an enormous amount of the backing material because we don't want it interfering with the pedals down in that area. Now we've also taken off part of the front edge because where this sits up against the little box for the accelerator pedal to go in, there's nowhere for the front of the flange, if you imagine it's that, there's nowhere for it to go over. It just sits right up against a flat piece of metal, like at the front there, it sits like that. So we've taken off the bit of overlap from the front and made sure that this actually fits into the hole, which it does reasonably well now. You just pop it on at the bottom and then just feed it in until all of the overlap goes through the hole. Now to install it, we have to basically build the whole module on the side of the car. This needs to go through first, followed by the other boot. I expect this is going to be a bit of a fight to get this on over here, so you might want to come back in a minute. Well, at Chris's suggestion, we put a little bit of grease inside the tube and then slid it down over the top, and I ran this bolt through so that we could eliminate one degree of freedom from the universal joint. It also gave us something we could hold on to so that we could actually pull it through whilst it still wasn't over the UJ. So that's a really good way to get that on if you ever struggle with this yourself. So now we can assemble this back onto the steering column, slide the whole thing back through, and hopefully the, there won't be any bind up on the steering column, because if there's any binding whatsoever from all of this, we fail the IVA, so we need a new plan. So that was an absolute enormous faff, and I hated every minute of it, which is why you didn't see very much of it. But now, that actually runs nice and freely and doesn't bind up at all. And we have coverage across the extending part of the steering column where it's normally greasy, so that shouldn't rust and get all manky and get a lot of uh, crud in it. And it is almost completely sealed, if not actually completely sealed, where it's pinching and pushing the two pieces of rubber together between these two boots. I am extremely pleased that that is done. And all being well, I never want to take the steering column out of this car ever again. Now, while we've got the floor off, because you'll have noticed we had to take that off so that Chris could actually get through and help me get this in, uh, there are a few other bits that we need to address. One is wiring up the fuel pump and the fuel sender, which we have the cables for here. We've already identified them, so we're just going to pull these apart, run them down, and then wrap the cables for that. And we're also going to do the windscreen wiper motor, which we have the cable for, we've identified that, we know which ones go into here, 
Um, so we'll get that wired up and then come back to you. There is one thing that I desperately need to do before I forget, and that is fix this tiny little bit of brake pipe that runs from the uh, residual pressure valve down to the T to do the front brakes. Because unfortunately, at some point in the past, we missed with the jack and managed to crush it, which was a pretty dumb move on our part. But we can get that redone. I've got the flaring tool. We can switch that around, take the ends off, redo it, and we should be good. Which basically finishes up everything. I tell a lie, there is one more bit that we need to do. We need to run the brake uh, warning sensor, the brake level warning sensor from here onto the instrument cluster. So we need to find the wire and get that in. But once we've done all that boring wiring, we'll come back. Well, that brings us to the end of a fairly significant section of wiring because that is everything complete on this side of the car. It is just starting to rain, so I'm gonna be very, very quick going through this. We've got the ring terminals to go down onto our Bosch 44 clone over there, and we have the four individual wires that go into the wiper motor. Now, unfortunately, we don't know of the two uh, power lines, high and low, we don't know which way around they are. They're not indicated on the uh, wiring diagram we actually have. So if you happen to know what color is what, um, we know that green with black is the intermittent, that goes into the intermittent wiper relay, but there is violet with green and green with yellow, and we're not sure which one is which, so we haven't wired it into the proper plug yet. Also, we can't find the plug at the moment, so we're just gonna leave them for the time being and move on. Now the brake fluid sensor that we need to put in here, we're gonna put on the front circuit because they are two completely separate circuits with two completely separate reservoirs. That just runs directly into the cluster on the back and it's a wire that we've actually terminated previously. So we just need to join a new wire on there and run it straight round. But we're not gonna do that right now because it is getting heavier. So I'm gonna start throwing as much of this stuff back in the garage as quickly as possible after the camera. So now that we're done with all the wiring at the front of the car, apart from the stuff that we've inevitably forgotten and we'll get back to later, we're going to have a crack at trying to plumb our washer jets. Now we've already got the jets themselves installed in the car, and I'm now really, really struggling to get these connectors on. We've used exactly the right size spade connectors and they're a little bit tricky. So anyway, we've got a couple of different pumps here for the, for the, uh, for the water bottle, and one of them came off the TT, that's this one here with a single outlet, and this one in my right hand with the two outlets may have come off the A3 or the A6 or who really knows what. Now we're hoping, because we haven't got a T-piece in our garage anywhere to, uh, to take the one outlet from the TT pump and turn it into two, we were hoping that we could use this to drive both. We just run one hose off to each jet and life would be easy. But you'll spot the problem now when I, go, when I go to power it up. If I put 12 volts in, we get a fairly pathetic dribble of water out the left-hand side. And if I put everything the other way around, we get a much more energetic blast soaking myself and the camera, of water out of your left-hand nozzle. Now in fairness, we should have noticed this. These are little impeller pumps. They've got the motor housing in here, and at the end is just like a little probably plastic impeller that sucks water in the middle and blows it out the side. But with the two outlets here, because the water's being spun by the impeller, the outlet that is following the direction of the impeller, so if you've got the impellers running that way, it will be coming up that outlet, you'd kind of expect it to only go through one of the valves at a time, like otherwise you just have one outlet that just tees to both in the housing. So we should have predicted that this would be a one outlet at a time jobby, but unfortunately we didn't, so we do still need to find a tee for this one. Well, it turned out while I was filming that last piece, Aid did in fact manage to find a tee piece. Now this is an OEM one that came with the car, came with all the stuff that we've got here, which means it takes OEM fittings. It's not like a regular barb into it, which would have been really nice, which meant that we had to reuse the OEM end and therefore the OEM line. Annoyingly, this is like a really hard plastic, so getting, uh, getting the end back into it once we'd cut it down to the right sort of length was kind of a nightmare. We had to use a hot air gun to soften it so that we could get the, get the uh, fitting in and everything. I don't recommend that, honestly, if you're ever having to do this, just go to a store and buy some like rubber hose or something that takes barb fittings. It's a lot easier. Um, but we were trying to use what we had on hand, as we do with a lot of the car. So that just fits onto there like that. The, uh, the installation here looks a bit weird from where you are, but it does actually make sense because of other constraints. We've got all the moving parts of the wiper mechanism under here. So we're looping it around this way because then the natural run that the, um, that the hose wants to take is well away from any of the moving bits. We don't actually even have to like pin it in place anywhere. It just holds itself where we need it to be. We pop this little T in the middle. I'm gonna take some little rubber ends because the ends at least do, uh, do, do, do use rubber. And we can just connect that to both sides of our T 
under here, just like this, he says, struggling to reach through the, uh, through the access holes in the panel. So yeah, we're going to cable tie the, the uh, end section in the middle here, and that'll be it. We've uh, hopefully got washers now. Now our last job today, and hopefully our last piece of wiring on the firewall here, is our brake level warning switch. So we've drilled a hole in the lid of our brake reservoir, we just feed the wires through there, feed the centre section through. This is going to be a little bit tricky because the, uh, the lid is actually almost exactly as thick as the entire threaded section, so I'm going to have to like compress the lid down a bit, it's like a two layer lid with some bend in it. So I have to squeeze that down some to get the, uh, the nut that sits on top to actually thread down over it. So if I just hold this kind of like that, sort of clamp it some, hopefully I can get enough turns on that thread that it doesn't just strip itself off because it is all plastic, it's quite soft. I will be honest, it seems a little bit weird because this is an OBP sensor as spec for the OBP reservoirs that we're using. So this is all part of a system. It just does seem a little bit odd that there's that little thread at the top, but whatever, it's holding on quite fine. So now we're just going to plug this into the multimeter and make sure it works because for some reason we haven't done that yet. So I've got the, uh, got the connectors hooked up to some test leads here and we can see if I drop the float, the uh, connection is made and our multimeter starts beeping. In fairness, there is still a chance this comes back and bites us because we don't actually know if the original switch for this car is like it's open when it's full and closed when it's low or the opposite way around. So this might be that the car thinks it's low until it isn't, but hopefully this is fine. Yep. And what's becoming a pattern for this episode, it turns out we did have the thing we need. This is the brake fluid level switch from an A3 of the same generation as the A3 and TT that we stole everything else from. So right now this is upside down, which means the float is in the top of it, so it thinks it's full. And uh, I'm not sure if you can hear the beep from the voltmeter when it is beeping, but it isn't right now. Now if I flip it upside down, which represents no fluid, I get a beep, which means the circuit is closed, which is exactly the same behavior that we have on the level sensor that we're putting in here. So everything's gonna be fine. This is all gonna work the right way around, and we're not gonna have a brake fluid warning light that turns off when we have no brakes. And to wrap up for today, we're just going to run the wire that connects it to the instrument cluster. So all the way down here on pin 29 of our blue connector is what goes into the light inside the dashboard. Now, you might be wondering why we haven't sent this round to the left-hand side of the car with all the other wires, of which there are many. It's a whole bundle about yay big. That's because we've already taped it up and everything, and we don't really want to break into that. It'll probably look worse if we've got like this random extra wire running next to it. So we're just going to shortcut it through here. It's a much shorter run. And in fairness, the fact that we could only find a few feet of this uh, blue cable with a brown stripe may have been a factor as well. So that's now done. I can tuck all of these back down inside the instrument cluster. Well, I can if I take a few more seconds about it. Get that all away, and I think we're done. Well, if you've enjoyed the progress that we're making here, please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you can see our next one coming up. We are continuing to try and make big strides toward getting the engine running. Obviously, today we've got the fuel pump wiring in and everything. We've got a fuel sensor in. We've got the brake sensor in. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening now, and obviously we do still have more to do, but we're hoping in the next few weeks we're going to start building in the uh, new gear shifter cables and other bits like that. So we're trying, really, really trying to sprint toward the goal of getting this thing actually moving under its own power by hopefully the end of the year. Now, if you want to see that happen a bit quicker, you can always kick us a few quid. You can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show to support us directly. $5 and up on Patreon gets you a discount at our merch store at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy any of the beanie hats that I'm not wearing, the t-shirts that I'm also not wearing, or various other bits and pieces of clothing, mugs, etc. that uh, I'm doing a really poor job of demonstrating today. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.